kind of came by it honest. My dad always had pointing dogs. You know, that's how it all started, and then it just kind of evolved from pointing dogs to Labradors. I would probably not be a dog trainer uh, as a career without saving. He said to me, I can see that you have what it takes to be a dog trainer. Sammy Livingston with Livingston Gun Dogs. I mean, that's all I've ever known. The dogs were an avenue to the outdoors for me, and uh, just growing up around it, I mean, it was just, it was just a love that I've had ever since a, a young kid, and just, you know, I just kind of took off with it and ran with it. Once I found out I could make it a profession, that's when I really, you know, started pursuing it. At Livingston Gun Dogs, we're big on family. At Livingston Gun Dogs in Texas, uh, my daughter and wife help out at the kennel. My daughter's two years old. She loves to help feed dogs, help feed puppies, uh, socialize pups. And my wife's there and has been there from the start. She's been a great help from whelping pups to um, taking over when I'm on a hunt or, you know, whatever it may be she's always been extremely helpful so it's but it's fun to see my daughter growing up in it she's always excited when she pulls up to the kennel or you know when we're she sees a dog or sees the gunners in the back of my pickup she you know she's always asking if there's a dog in there so it's been a it's been extremely rewarding to have this you know my family involved with me so obviously i mentioned livingston gun dogs is very family oriented and with that being said uh, my brother-in-law, Michael DeLoach, is LG Livingston Gun Dogs Atlantic, and he and I, we were together, um, working together in the past, and we stayed connected, and, you know, he took a trip with me to North Dakota, and from there, we, we grew Livingston Gun Dogs Atlantic. Um, he ended up marrying my wife's sister, and it's been a great thing, and it's been a great partnership, and I uh, wouldn't change it for anything. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to tackle this with anybody else. Sammy and I were working together. Um, there were some opportunities to train dogs, um, and Sammy encouraged me into it. So it was one of those situations where um, I've been working with dogs. I've been around dogs for a long time. I knew how to do things. I knew why to do things. I knew what I wanted in my personal dog. Um, but Sammy said that he, he might remember this or not, but he, he said to me, uh, I can see that you have what it takes to be a dog trainer. Um, and this was at a point in time where I'd never imagined that I would be a dog trainer for the rest of my life, um, at least not professionally. So Sammy kind of introduced this pivotal moment for me in my, in my mind. Um, and then over the, the coming years, that grew and grew and grew. Um, so at Livingston Gun Dogs, uh, it, our whole whole deal is champions in the field and uh, and in the home. Um, so what that means is we're talking about that 365 days a year. Uh, the goal is that the the standard is the same across the board. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the summer and you're on family vacation. Uh, having the opportunity to take that dog on vacation with you um, and enjoy it, or leave that dog at home and not be stressed out about it. And then also um, in the field and being a what we would classify as like the top shelf, being able to do it all. So the goal for us is that um, the most universal dog is a dog that wants to work for you because if the dog wants to work with you, uh, if it's a team, team effort, um, you can shape that dog into whatever it is that makes the most sense for you. So our labs are, are primarily used for, uh, for waterfowl hunting. Um, 
geese and ducks primarily by our clients. Uh, but I personally use them from anything from upland like quail in Georgia, uh, upland up in North Dakota with, with pheasants and grouse, um, and really anything in between. I mean, we've got uh, one particular cr uh, client down in um, Brunswick, Georgia that just moved back to Statesboro, one of my good buddies, Adam Hine, uh, he uses one of our labs to um, actually run falconry hunt. So he uses a hawk or a falcon um, to pursue rabbits, uh, pheasants, ducks, and, and all kinds of different stuff. Um, so if you could envision a, uh, taking a shotgun out of somebody's hand um, and actually putting a bird of prey in their hand as their weapon uh, and watching a handler and a dog and a bird um, work together as a team to pursue uh, a game animal. Um, that's what he does. Uh, we've also got guys that do shed hunting. We've got guys that, uh, that that really focus on the family side of things and only hunt a little bit. We've got guys that hunt like crazy and they might not even have started a family yet. Um, we've got college guys that definitely haven't started a family yet, but they are incorporating their dog into uh, somewhat of that college life and working in training and all that kind of stuff and then hunting on the weekends. Um, and then we've got old retired guys that have had tons of different dogs over the course of their life and they're looking for a dog that um, is going to spend a ton of time with them and probably go just about everywhere that they go. Um, so some of the main things that I look for in a dog, uh, like we spend 365 days a year with our dogs. Um, so our dogs are not uh, trialing season and they're not just hunting season and they're definitely not just uh, weekend dogs type of deal. Um, so what we're looking for, what I'm looking for in particular, uh, I want a dog that can go from A to B to C and all the way to Z with very little uh, hiccup in between, if any. Um, so what that requires is a temperament that's going to allow a dog to be um, a team player. Uh, a dog that is willing to work, willing to learn, and then also has the drive to back that up. Um, so if a dog is willing to work and they have the desire to work, they're willing to work for us and they also have the desire to go do the task, uh, it makes everything come together. Um, so we're looking for a dog that can also handle the, the home life, handle the family life, be around babies, be around kids, uh, be around other dogs obviously, um, and then be in the most intense hunting situations and uh, do all the fancy fun things that we like to see our dogs do in the field. One of my favorite things um, in a way that I kind of would like people to think about the potential of these, these dogs but it's a dog sprawled out on the couch, like tongue hanging out. He's been completely well behaved all afternoon. He's been around all the family or all the people at duck camp and he is completely content. Uh, but he's getting up at 4 a.m. the next morning and he's gonna break ice and he is gonna chase down uh, a 20 pound goose and he is gonna tackle. And the picture of complete contentedness in the home, uh, chilling on the couch by a fire and as soon as it's time to, to rock and roll in the morning, it's, it's time to go. And I, I don't mean, also don't mean busting down the door to get out there. I mean, he's doing it like a gentleman. I, as a trainer, try to build dogs. Um, sometimes that might be, you know, take a little more time. Other times it might be a little quicker. But we build it based on the dog, not necessarily, you know, we, yes, we have a program, but we're not, you know, trying to fit a dog into it one dog or each dog into a box. So when we're at our breeding program, what we're looking for, uh, it's a combination of things. So um, it's the best, we're looking for the best combination of health and temperament to be very simple. Uh, so on the health side of things, uh, a lot of that has to do with hip scores, elbow scores, eye certification, uh, genetic testing. Um, and then on the temperament side of things, it has a lot to do with performance. So. Uh, not just the way they perform, but how they perform. So Sammy and I both are, are firm believers that uh, that nutrition is a is a huge part of puppy development, um, of healthy dogs going through training and, and growing all the way from uh, day one all the way um, specifically to day uh, or to two years old um, when a dog technically or, or generally reaches maturity. Uh, we have always been huge proponents of feeding really, really high quality dog food. Uh, we believe that, um, that that is step one and that is an absolute necessity. Uh, so we've done that from day one and we, we are firm believers and we tell everybody that. Uh, earlier this year, um, I think right at the new year, 
uh, I was looking for a way to um, kind of take another step and maybe add a benefit uh, beyond the benefit that our dogs we felt th that we felt like our dogs were already receiving from the food. Uh, so supplements is what I was looking at. Uh, in particular, I think originally I was looking for joint stuff and joint lubrication and all that kind of stuff because uh, I, I think the best mentality or the best way to describe the mentality uh, would be the saying. Um, an ounce of prevention is, is better than a pound of cure. Uh, so the goal was to get ahead of things, to be proactive, not have to be reactive, uh, and to eliminate as many possibilities as we could um, on the health side of things, for hips, for elbows uh, in particular. Um, so what took place was, I think Alpha Dog actually reached out to me, but I was in the middle of discussions with my vet and then also uh, in the middle of doing some research myself. Um, had conversations with Joe. Uh, he was extremely helpful. We kind of put our finger on it and decided that, that was the direction that we were going to head. So the goal was never to take a problem that we were seeing with our dogs and fix it. Uh, the goal was to add benefit to the lives of our dogs, um, starting as early as possible. Uh, so Originally, it started with joint supplements and uh, I guess that's free range um, and then vitality um, being the krill. And we started feeding those two and every once in a while, uh, as needed, we would feed balance. Um, specifically, if a dog had an upset stomach or if we felt like uh, it would be beneficial to them at that time. Um, and then resurgence if a dog had a long day of uh, training or hunting and that kind of stuff. Uh, we also breed. so. Um, Eventually, they started telling us that Optipup was coming around, uh, and that was huge because we wanted to get in front of things as quick as possible, as early as possible, um, and Optipup became something that we could start adding to um, our breeding program before the puppies leave us to go home with their new families, and we can kind of hand that off uh, and get those dogs started um, basically from around eight weeks up to, to 16 months. Uh, and we feel like that is pushing the dogs in a trajectory uh, to have the best possible opportunity to have uh, the best hips they could have, the best elbows they could have, um, et cetera. I think what separates us is our puppies, the amount of time we spend with our pups, uh, what we're doing with those pups from zero to eight weeks, and uh, just attention to detail and the head start that we're giving them before they leave us and go to their uh, new homes. So we decided to implement Optipup in our program based off of the ingredients and talking with the vet. Um, there were a lot of great things in there that we could, that was going to be, that would be extremely beneficial to our pups, but also the females while they were in pup. Um, and it's just been a it's been a great tool that we've added into um, our program. At Livingston Gun Dogs, it's, it's a lot more than just selling a pup for us. It's about building a relationship with our clients. I hope that they see our passion and commitment to them, the dogs, and you know, that we're, that we're there. My favorite thing about Livingston Gun Dogs and kind of what brought Sammy and I together. First encounter was work, right? Second encounter, or not necessarily second encounter, but that grew into friendship and that grew into family. Uh, and we are, we are family. We're not blood family, but we're family. Um, that is the way we try to treat our customers. So uh, customer service is by far one of the most important things to Sammy and I. Um, the dogs are what we're doing, but the, every dog is attached to a human being. Um, and that person matters, matters a whole lot to both of us. So uh, conversations, one-on-one um, -on -one conversations, having people out to visit, being very interactive with the training, uh, having a dad bring out his 10-year-old to come work with his dog at the kennel, um, including the entire family as much as they're willing to allow us to, uh, is absolutely huge. Um, I mean, Sammy and I talk about it all the time. One of the coolest things would be to sell a dad a dog and then uh, eventually that son comes back and gets a dog from us when he grows old enough to get a dog because it made that much of an impact on his life. Um, and we just get to be a part of that. So we get to be a part of that, uh, them 
experiencing the fun stuff with their dog, the training with their dog. Sometimes we get to experience that too, which is great. Um, and then seeing that come full circle. So uh, definitely customer service, definitely the family side of things. Um, and just loving on people.